One topic that's extremely relevant today with regards to international trade is NAFTA, or what at least was NAFTA, uh, now known as the USMCA, the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about NAFTA, which is really the originating uh, kind of free trade body and really why it was created and what it did. And then we'll get into kind of the new version, which is the USMCA. So NAFTA was originally created or at least enacted in 1995. And the idea behind NAFTA is we wanted to create what we call a free trade zone. So the particular parties that were involved in NAFTA are the same exact parties that were involved in the USMCA. So we've got the North American Free Trade Agreement. So naturally, we have the United States and Canada and, of course, Mexico. And the logic was is that kind of a rising tide lifts all boats. And so if we allowed goods to flow freely across NAFTA, international boundaries between these three countries, uh, we would uh, essentially lift the standard of living of all countries involved. We would allow U.S. businesses access to the Mexican market and the Canadian market without uh, any sort of regulation or at least as much regulation. Uh, and of course, we would help out Mexico, which was not necessarily the greatest country in uh, economically speaking, and so we would give them access to uh, the U.S. market as well, and that was the the, the logic as it went. Um, so NAFTA has been pretty controversial, though, and there's been a lot of benefits as a result of it. But many people, by and large, blame NAFTA as sort of the uh, the reason why manufacturing in the U.S. sort of left. Uh, even though, like personally speaking, I don't think it was entirely. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with automation and robots and those sorts of things that, that made manufacturing job loss inevitable in some ways. But there's a lot of animosity there towards NAFTA, regardless of what anybody else believes. Uh, and some of that is fair. So one of the big things in President Trump's presidential speech in 2016 was he kind of campaigned on this idea that NAFTA was going to be one of his very significant kind of changes. He wanted to completely do away with it, even talked about eliminating it at one point in time. And so there was a lot of uncertainty with regards to whether NAFTA was going to exist uh, during the Trump presidency and kind of beyond. Um, so as a result of that, we kind of got to a place to where we're reevaluating whether or not this is something that we wanted to actually uh, have instilled. Uh, but the reality is, is that we like the idea of free trade. And I think that in the U.S., because we're a free market system, uh, we like the idea of free trade. And so, you know, just because we're not the ones entirely benefiting doesn't mean we can adjust our philosophy on free trade. It kind of works all, you know. Uh, it applies all the time or, or not and that sort of thing. Uh, but so what really is the S uh, USMC? We kind of know what NAFTA is, right? Again, created in 95, free trade zone. That was the basic premise of it. Well, the UMCA is essentially like NAFTA, uh, mostly NAFTA. So really, the USMCA is probably more like 90% of NAFTA. Uh, with So it's largely the same thing. It's not a drastic deviation from the whole idea of NAFTA. So many of the same ideals that were in part in NAFTA and the same policies are still present. There's just a couple of, there's quite a few changes in fact, but there's a couple of notable, notable changes. The main idea behind the USMCA, which is interesting, is at least at this recording, uh, is in the process of being vetted and is about to be signed officially by uh, President Trump, thus enacting it uh, into, into law, uh, is it was designed to help re-increase uh, manufacturing, uh, specifically in North America, not just in the U.S., uh, but is designed to hopefully uh, kind of raise up manufacturing. So there's a specific, uh, I don't know if you call it a, a provision, if you will, that uh, in the USMCA, that in order to qualify under free trades, looking specifically at manufacturing of cars, 75% uh, of the vehicle and the subsequent components uh, has to be originated from a, a North American country. So those components and parts have to originate uh, from or in North America. So that could be the US, that could be Mexico, that could be Canada, most likely a combination of the three, right? And that's very characteristic of today um, because when you have 
auto, U.S. auto manufacturing, the supply chain, you know, some of the production happens in the U.S., but some of the parts are made in Mexico and vice versa. And so you have this kind of larger supply chain, which was a big deal, which caused a big deal of uncertainty because literally automakers had invested billions of dollars into this North American manufacturing system. And with the prospect of all of that going away and NAFTA completely going away, there was a lot of uncertainty and concern because of those investments that were made. So as you can imagine, a lot of people, especially in the auto industry, are very relieved um, because that has not gone away. So all those investments aren't for nothing. Uh, And now with this provision, 75% of the vehicles and components have to originate in North America in order to qualify for free trade, which means there's not going to be a tariff or some other sort of uh, kind of, uh, you know, international um, sort of policy kind of levied on it. Um, So this is designed to encourage things to be made in North America. Now, you're probably wondering, well, does this mean that U.S. manufacturing is going to have this big resurgence? I don't know, but I don't think so. Uh, and the the reason for that is kind of what I mentioned earlier in the lecture, which is the kind of movement of U.S. Ma- manufacturing subsequently down to China or subsequently down to Mexico, rather, and then over to China and other places that are low cost producing um, isn't all necessarily just because of wages. Uh, that is a contributory factor but it is also because of automation and because of technology. And we can have robots doing certain types of jobs that are fairly routine, which in turn reduces our need for labor. So because of that, I don't really think so. Um, The other thing is we obviously have Mexico, which compared to the U.S. is uh, lower, is a cheaper country to get goods produced in, and they do have some infrastructure set up for that. So you're certainly going to see that there. So I don't think you'll see this big resurgence in U.S. manufacturing, although I could be wrong, and you can certainly let me know, and I'm happy to admit I was wrong. Uh, The other thing that's actually interesting here is there were a lot of provisions or a lot of kind of energy put behind tougher labor enforcement, specifically in Mexico. Um, So Mexico doesn't have the kind of Uh, union system that's here in the U.S. In fact, many employers actually run the union. So you can imagine if you know anything about unions and representing workers, that just seems to be kind of a weird dynamic, right? If you're kind of uh, the, the person that's negotiating against you is also kind of the person representing you, that just seems like a misplaced incentive system, but maybe it works. Uh, But the people that created the USMCA didn't feel like it worked. And so they wanted there to be tougher enforcement, which meant inspections by uh, in the US, uh, in Mexico to make sure that there's certain standards being upheld uh, and then making sure that uh, Mexican workers were well represented and those sorts of things. Um, So that was a very important component. There were some smaller things there like access to the U.S. or the Canadian dairy market and some other things. Um, But probably the big thing, of course, is this U.S. manufacturing piece, which has been very, very important. Um, But access to the dairy market in Canada is also important because as you've seen with trade wars, one of the first things that every country imposes on the U.S. is a tariff against agriculture because agriculture is really, really important to us uh, and is really important to a lot of people, particularly in the Central Valley, which is where I'm from. Uh, So that's kind of the gist of it. So when we say NAFTA completely went away, uh, really not so much. It's really reborn as the USMCA with a couple of extra changes to it. But by and large, the focus is really trying to uh, encourage manufacturing, not just in the U.S., but also amongst other North American countries, Canada, as well as Mexico. And those are some of the important provisions. But the whole idea of free trade, which is, of course, the spirit of NAFTA, is still present with a couple of nuances.